Hey everyone! In this video series I'm going to show you a way to create a stylized tree in Blender 2.8. In the first part we modeled a tree trunk. Next we're going to create a high poly sculpt. For the sculpting I like to have some space and after the cube is only in the way and we don't need it as a size reference anymore I simply deleted it. When working on a lot of objects or different versions of the same object it's also handy to rename them. In this case I want to make sure that I always know which one is the one where the modifiers are applied and which one is the other. Now we can duplicate the low poly version with the applied modifiers. Press Shift D to duplicate and then escape to leave it in the same spot like the first one. This duplicated tree is going to be the high poly, so I also going to rename that one. Hide both of the low poly versions and select the high poly and then switch to sculpting tab. Currently our tree doesn't have enough topology to actually sculpt on it, so I will use dynamic topology. Dynamic topology is giving a few detailing options. In this case, I'm going to use the constant detail with a starting resolution of 20. Before you now just immediately start into sculpting, also remember to turn off symmetry. Okay, with this done, we're ready to sculpt. Next, I'm going to choose a brush. Um, for trees, I'm actually a bit obsessed with the clay stripes. I think it's giving it a really great look and it's working really nice. If you're also working with constant detail, do a detail flood fill in the beginning. With the detail flood fill, the whole mesh will be subdivided to the resolution you specified. Now that we have more topology, we can smooth out our mesh and get rid of the hard edges. You can do so by holding shift or using the smooth brush. I'm mainly concentrating here on the bottom part because the top part is gonna be hidden by the leaves. Also, if you're having trouble smoothing out smaller branches of the tree, Wait till you have more topology and then do the smoothing over there. The resolution of 20 worked great for smoothing, but next I want to add some more detail, so I'm going to increase it to 40. This time I won't make use of the detail flood fill, but instead just start sculpting. With the clay stripes, I'm now going to sculpt the bark of the tree simply by adding lines. Like before, I'm mainly concentrating at the bottom part of the tree and leaving the top part nearly untouched. At some point you have to increase your resolution again to keep on adding more detail. I'm normally increasing the resolution in steps of 20 and trying to avoid uh, about more than 140 because then my computer is getting really slow. When you're working on the smaller details also enable smooth shading. With this option enabled you can easier find the surface irregularities. In the end I'm always switching between the clay stripes and the smooth brush to give it a smooth look and still adding detail. As soon as you're happy with your sculpt, go back into the layout tab. Before we can use now the high poly mesh for baking to the low poly, we have to unwrap the low poly. Therefore, unhide the low poly and hide the high poly. With the low poly selected, switch into the UV editing tab. Here you should be automatically in edit mode. If not, make sure that you selected the tree and then press tab. Before I'm adding any seams, I like to do a unwrap in the beginning to see what I'm working on. To keep the UV map synchronized with the mesh selection, enable the arrow icon in the top left. If you open the properties view on the right, you can also um, enable stretching. Now we're all set and we can start adding seams. I started by adding seams to separate the tree branches from the tree trunk. Next I also added a seam at the bottom of the tree. And then one large seam going from the branches down to the bottom. After that I did another unwrap. With the stretch enabled I could easily see which part needed more improvement, especially the one that were light blue or going more into green. So I added a few more seams to the tree branches. When the UV unwrapping is done we can go back into the layout tab and add the leaves. For the leaves I created a new icosphere in object mode. With the sphere selected I went into edit mode and then changed the shading to wireframe. In face selection mode and in the either side or front view, you can now easily select the bottom part of the sphere and then delete it. Next, I changed back into object mode, then duplicated the sphere and then back into edit mode again with the new duplicate. Here again in front of side view, I selected the bottom row and deleted it. Back into object mode, I first scaled them to the right size and then duplicated them to move them in the right spot and maybe also rotate them a little bit. The smaller sphere I used a little bit on top of the bigger ones with a small offset to give it a more interesting look. Also I added a few small planes that are going to be leaves that are sticking out from the other ones. 
for the small leaves, you could also consider using a modifier, especially if you want to have more. If you just want to have a few like that, you can always just place them by hand. The only thing now left to do is to join all the parts together. Therefore, you can simply select them all and then just make sure that you select the tree trunk at the end. I did that by selecting everything and then deselecting the tree trunk once and selecting it again. If we now join them all together, the origin of the new object, so of the complete tree, will be where um, the origin of the tree trunk was. And that was directly at the bottom, which is what we want. Now that we have only one object, we can go back into the UV editing tab. Here, we can again select everything and then unwrap it. Now, if you currently unwrap it, there is not much space between the different islands of the mesh. So what you can do is select everything and then use the packed UV islands to create a margin between them. The only thing I like to do now at the end is try to use as much space as possible of the UV map. So I'm selecting the different islands and then scaling them and also maybe moving them around to group them or making, you know, just using more of the space. So in this part of the video, we created a high poly sculpt and now also finished off the low poly. So we're actually ready now for shading, which we're gonna do in the next part. And then also finishing off our tree by creating the different textures and everything else we need. I hope you liked this video and then also maybe of course give it a thumbs up. And then I will see you in the next one.